Last time on The Good and the Bad of Black Grad. Yeah, I remember I, I you know, had the same experience. And it's crazy walking into conferences about like biological diversity and talking about, you know, the importance and value and, and celebrating diversity. Right. Um, and it's a very homogenous room. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's, it can be startling, but but the excitement like almost makes up for it when you do find other other black folks at conferences. I remember this wasn't the first time that I that I saw a black person at a conference, but I remember at a conference in Toronto, um, I was like, it was midway through the conference and I was like slightly burned out and like looking across this room at the coffee, um, at the, the coffee time or whatever. And then this lady like, someone came up behind me and just taps me on the shoulder. And I looked behind me and it was uh, Dr. Ray Wynn Grant, who's this like super cool uh, researcher of like carnivores. She has like a Nat Geo show and she's like just an amazing, like inspiring researcher. And she's like, there's not many of us out here, is there? It's like, oh, and for a while, she was like, you know, exchanged like contact. And uh, it was it was really awesome. And there are a lot of experiences like that. A lot of people that, students that, you know, were still, were at the same career stage and still keep in touch. And, but just thinking about the importance of um, diverse perspectives in my field of work. So conservation science and invasive species management, I'm thinking about what folks value. Um, everybody in this room values something different when it comes to the ocean or a coastal ecosystem. And um, by getting diverse scientists, you just inherently tend to ask more a, a diverse a more diverse set of questions, and then you start to explore a more diverse set of answers. Mm-hmm. And even more so if you just have one train of thought coming from one kind of like homogenous group of people, like Peter said, it's if everybody's taught the same way, thinks the same way. You're never going to reach a solution that works for this huge group of people. Like my, you know, the people I'm working with span that and and be very candid about it. It's like, you are different than me. You live in a different place. You look different, you value different things. And I want to know how to integrate that into my plan because otherwise it's not gonna work. So when you, when you add that perspective at the researcher level, when you start then thinking about how we communicate and integrate and recruit and discuss from different populations, that in itself will now consider um, different um, barriers that might be in the way for those groups to either be involved in the research or even have their opinion or voices heard in that research. And that's so important for also improving the quality of science, right? And from a scientist perspective. Um, So for example, a lot of the research in in the cardiology sphere completely ignored women. And then women were having different symptoms and side effects with heart attacks and that, and the medications were not um, suitable. They weren't (laughs) correct, yeah. And that that is just one example. And I think we've done really well at including more women in science. And now it's going that extra step, right? It's now it's not perfect. We still we still have a lot of work to do there, but now it's ensuring that we have all of the right groups involved because that dictates one, the quality of science and how people are living and the quality of life on a daily basis and how how enriching that is and how impactful that is. And even at a ecosystems level too, same thing applies. Um, you know, I think one of the questions you have on here are like cohort hires. Um I think it's a great idea. Like one of the reasons why I mentally was able to finish graduate school is because um, me and some other folks formed this, you know, we started calling them brown people lunches. We Mm -hmm. got together once a month. We were the three or four non-white people in our department. And we just sat and talked about what it was like being the only ones. And then we started finding more people and more people and building a community. So we built that community ourselves instead of having the the university provide it for us. And that saved a lot of us, I think. And so Mm -hmm. not having the ability to reach out and find those people and build that community makes it hard. So if universities can hire cohorts together, it gives you that bit of stability that oftentimes you have to forge on your own, or if you don't, you just feel isolated. So I, I was involved in setting up a program Again, scholarship always helps to keep people retained and and want to attend and then building the programs. So scholarship is one thing, but then what are you doing for those students to uh, make sure that they feel supported? Mm -hmm. Because with scholarship still comes a lot of academic stress because you feel like you've been successful then, imposter syndrome kicks in, why am I here, should I be here? Um, And then you don't have anything to support yourself in that experience. So I think, um, for example, 
I worked on a project that uh, recruited those from underrepresented groups into neuroscience with BrainScan, which is a huge initiative here at Western. And what that did was bring in really diverse group of students who are now going through that cohort together. So nice. um, one thing, yeah. And then in that, there's going to be tools to help them prepare for academia, which many may not have experienced at all. So mm -hmm. how to get a paper and report together? How do you look at publishing? How do you get to conferences? What do those costs and expenses look like, et cetera? So I think that's those... extremely useful. Yeah. <laughs> and then sounds like I, I could have used that. Those, yeah. How to have those skills. And then, of course, tied in with the mentor um, in that group, which is really important. And then yeah, there's so much. Mm -hmm. That was just a thought. Yeah. Institutions. I think one of the other really important things beyond just funding, beyond just giving people the space, is like making sure that it's a sustainable structure. And often that oh God, means yeah. having a professor or some permanent, you know, person that's not in charge of running the group, but just in charge of like holding it together. Um, right. Like it's students turn over so quickly. You know, we have such grad students are not, you know, don't have a huge amount of free time and. You know, maintaining these groups takes a lot of effort, so making sure that you're making sure these institutions are permanent, these communities are permanent within your institution is super, super key. There's a indigenous back in Mi'kmaq law program. Before that was established some 30 years ago, there had been no uh, indigenous black um, and Mi'kmaq graduates from the law school. Since that program came into existence, there have been 80. Wow, yeah, there you go. So pathway programs, um, you know, really make a difference. Uh, and so the, you know, funding these with my partner and with corporate partners, I think, uh, will will help with that uh, pathway.